don't want to cover that. Yeah, I guess so. Hey. Hi, other friends, and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, we're going to talk about the brush and the eraser tool. And then we're also going to learn how to move around and manipulate our canvas. So we're going to start by opening up an image. We have our set at 2000 by 2000 pixels, but you can really create this at any size. We're just looking to practice and play around with the tool. So to get to our brush tool, we can look for and click this paintbrush icon on the Photoshop toolbar. The keyboard shortcuts for these are fairly intuitive and very easy to remember, and they make it a lot easier to quickly access and grab these tools. So we're gonna start with our brush tool and we're just gonna draw a circle. Now you can see that our circle is black and it's got a fairly fuzzy or feathered gradient for its edge. So first we're gonna talk about how we can play around with the color of it. And then we're gonna play around with the actual brush shape and how it paints that maybe not have a fuzzy or a blended outline. So first is the color. We can change the color of our brush tool by setting our foreground and background color, which are these two squares at the very bottom of our toolbar. And you can see right now that my foreground color is black and the background color is white. The names foreground and background don't actually mean what's in the foreground and in the background, but you can think of it as paint on your palette. It's essentially two colors that you've preloaded or prepared to paint with. And you can change these colors at any time, but we have two colors that are quickly loaded for our convenience that we can switch back and forth between the two of them. So if I wanted to switch, for example, my active color from black to white, I can hit this little arrow icon to swap the colors. And you can see that it now changes the top box, my foreground color to white. So if I were to start painting, my brush strokes are white. The keyboard shortcut for switching the colors between foreground and background is the letter X. So let's say that we want to change the color. We don't want to paint with black, we want to paint with yellow. To change the color, we're going to click on the square that we want to change, so the black foreground square, and it brings up this nifty little color picker. We move the circle around, and this shows our current color and our new color. So if we're going to go for a yellow, let's say something like this, we click OK, and our foreground color has now changed to yellow. We can change our background color in very much the same way. So let's say we want to bring this to a, a dark blue. Hit OK, and we have those two colors loaded. So now if we want to paint a, uh, another uh, circle, let's say a yellow circle with blue eyes and mouth. So we're going to start with a yellow foreground color, and we're going to paint our circle. We're going to hit X to swap the two colors around, and there's our happy face. So we know how to play around the colors, we know how to swap the two colors. But let's say that we don't want our brush to have this sort of fuzzy, very soft airbrush look. Let's say we want it to have a very hard edge. So what we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to change our brush settings. To get to the brush settings menu, we can go to window and then we can go to brushes or brush settings. Brushes lets you pick between a number of preset brushes that are either in Photoshop or that you've created yourself. Brush settings lets you adjust the specific settings of the brush that you're currently using. And you can see that the keyboard shortcut for brush settings is F5. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our preset brushes. And you can see that Photoshop has organized a couple of presets for use. And then I have a little folder where I've created a whole bunch of my own brushes depending on what I'm trying to do. But we'll start with the default. So right now we have a soft round brush. So what that means is the edge of the brush is soft. It has a gradient to it. So you can see here it says pressure size. So really right now, depending on how much pressure I lay down, it gives me a thin to a thick line. And the more pressure I lay down, the softer the blend becomes. When it comes to pressure opacity, rather than change the size, the more I lay down, the more intense the color becomes. If I'm very gently brushing across, I can get a nice soft built up of color, or I can press down really hard and build up the color very quickly. This one gives me both opacity and size tied to pressure. So starting off with a very light touch gives me almost nothing. But as I press down on the brush, you can see it sort of fades away and slowly diminishes in size. Similarly, we have these three presets where it's hard round and either pressure size, opacity, or pressure opacity and size. So the hard round simply means that the edge of our brush is going to be a hard edge. The pressure, much like the other brush, is based either to size or opacity or both. And you can play around with a lot of these presets. They're designed to give you a lot of cool textures and you can actually create a lot of variety in your work the more you play around and dive into these brush settings. So those are the presets. So let's say we have a brush 
and we have uh, our hard round, we're gonna do opacity, pressure, and size. But we wanna play around with the particular settings of this brush. So we can go into our brush settings menu, or we can open it up by hitting F5. And we have a lot of these different settings. So right now, the default is for the opacity based on pen pressure, and then uh, the flow based on pen pressure, and you can see how it controls our brush. If we turn this off, all we're changing when we change the pressure is the opacity. The size isn't changing at all. There's a lot of other settings that honestly, it's a lot to cover. And I think as we go forward, when I do certain things, I will walk you through the settings I'm using for the brush to do this. But I recommend that you spend some time to play around with the brushes and the brush settings and to get a feel for what the brush can do. Honestly, I could spend hours going through every setting in here and still not cover what's possible. Really what I wanna do is introduce you to how you can adjust these settings, where to adjust these settings, and then you can play around with them at your own leisure. And it's important we know this because a lot of tools will use these two menus. Whether we're working with a brush tool, a pencil tool, an eraser tool, whether we're working with masks, they all use the brush and the specific settings that we have for that brush. So the more comfortable and more familiar we are with these menus, the easier it is in the future to use these more advanced tools. When we use our eraser tool, it uses a lot of the same brush settings and we can change the settings as well. So you can see right now that our eraser tool changes the size based on pen pressure. But just like the brush tool, we can change this. So let's say we want to turn this off, but we want to set our opacity and flow to pressure. So now instead of changing the size, when we press harder or softer, it fades the color a little bit. I guess there are a couple more things I want to quickly cover in this video. Um, the first is specifically opacity and flow with our brush settings. So it's best to think of these two settings or the brush tool more like an airbrush. So the opacity is the dilution of our color or our paint. How much pigment to water in a sense if we're airbrushing to create our paint mix. So the higher the opacity, the less water there is and the more paint there is, the lower the opacity, the reverse. The less paint there is, the more water there is. Similarly, the flow is essentially our air pressure. Okay, so the higher the flow, the more air, pre air pressure it is. The lower the flow, the less air pressure. And really what these two settings do is they help modulate or control the intensity and the spread of our color as we lay it down. So let's take a brush and let's turn off everything. So when we lay a brush, it's just pure flat color. So right now our opacity and our flow, you can see up top, are set to 100. If we were to turn our flow off, essentially minimize the air pressure, you can see that despite our opacity being a maximum, there's very little color that's coming out. And this is useful if you want to be able to build up. Similarly, with our flow max or our opacity lower, we get the same thing. The main difference between the two is that with our flow at maximum, the amount of color that we're laying down with each stroke is always consistent and it's tied to our opacity. So you can see here that every stroke I lay, no matter how hard I'm pressing down with my brush tool, the color intensity is the same. With our opacity at maximum and our flow drop down, there's a bit of modulation to it. And you can see that it's a little linked to both the pen pressure and how much we lay on top of it. So by using the two in combination, we can adjust how intense or how soft we're laying down our color. And I like to link these both to pen pressure for a lot of control. Okay, there's another couple of things I wanna cover. Uh, the first is the undo and redo shortcuts. And I think these are fairly standard across pretty much every software ever. To undo something you did, you hit Control Z. With Photoshop, undo can go in step based on the number of history states that you've set up in your preferences. So remember recalling our previous video, the more undo states that you have or the more history states that you've set up, the further back you can undo. And literally just by hitting Control Z, you can keep undoing until you hit your limit. Once you've hit that cap, Photoshop will no longer continue to undo. A neat thing about Photoshop that I like as well is because it's saving the last however many steps in your history, you can also redo. And the keyboard shortcut for that is Control Shift Z or Shift Control Z. And you can see that we can add back all of our changes that we removed. And this is really handy if you want to quickly see if you like a change or not. To adjust our brush size, we use the square, I guess bracket parentheses buttons. They look like this on our keyboard. This one increases the brush size and this decreases the brush size. 
So you can see right now I'm working with a brush that's yay big. If I'm hitting this button right here, I'm increasing my brush size. And similarly, if I hit this button, I'm decreasing it. This is the same for the eraser tool. With our eraser selected, we hit the small parentheses or the open parentheses to make the brush smaller and the large parentheses to make it bigger. Let's say that we want to zoom in on our canvas. So you can view and you can zoom in, or you can see that the keyboard shortcut is Control plus or Control minus. And then Control zero is to fit the entire canvas on the screen. So let's start with zooming in. So we hit Control plus and we can zoom in. Control minus, zooms out. If we hit Control zero, it maximizes the canvas to our workspace within Photoshop on our monitor. Zoom in, canvas size. Zoom out. Canvas size. So let's say we're zoomed in and I want to edit one of the yellow happy faces. Well, how do I move my canvas up or down? We do that by using our hand tool. Uh, we can hit the keyboard shortcut for hand, which is H, or you can look for the little hand tool right here. You just drag around and you move your canvas to where you want to work on. And you can start painting. I'm gonna give him some eyebrows. Photoshop has a nifty quick shortcut which is by pressing spacebar and holding spacebar, it activates the hand tool. So we can move around. And then when we release the spacebar tool, it gives us back the tool that we were using. Now this works with any tool. So if I'm using the brush tool, if I'm painting and I want to move to the other side of the ear, spacebar to move, I let go of the spacebar and it gives me my hand tool right away. So this is nice for not having to constantly switch between the hand tool and whatever tool you're using to move around the canvas. One last thing I want to cover with the brush tool and specifically picking colors is the eyedropper tool. So let's say that we're working on the canvas. I'm just going to paint a bunch of colors on the canvas. So we know that we have our foreground and background color, and this lets us essentially preload two colors. But let's say that we're working with a large number of colors and we want to quickly grab something that's already been painted on the canvas. So let's say I want to grab this red. One useful tool that we can use is the eyedropper. And because our eraser tool already uses the letter E for the shortcut, eyedropper tool uses the keyboard shortcut I. And it looks like this little eyedropper icon right here. And what this lets us do is it lets us grab or sample colors on our canvas and preload it into our active foreground color. So um, I have my red. If I want to replace the red with a blue, I, I drop the blue. Uh, let's say that I want to use my eyedropper to change, to keep the blue, but I want to change my background color, the white, to this red. We hit our X to make the white our active foreground color, eyedropper tool, and we sample the red. Much like Spacebar gives us quick access to the hand tool without disrupting um, the current tool we're using, using the Alt button lets us do the same thing with the eyedropper. So let's say I'm painting with my brush, I'm painting red, painting red and I quickly want to grab this purple. If I press and hold Alt, it quickly brings up the eyedropper tool. I can grab it. Releasing Alt brings back my brush tool and I can start painting. And this is useful for painting and blending on the fly. So as you lay down your color with the opacity, you're simply eyedropping and painting as you go. And this lets us give, or this gives us a very um, easy, quick way to start working on blending colors together. In Photo P, the brush and eraser functionalities are basically identical. Quick commands. For brush, B, and for the eraser is E. Our brush size is open and close parentheses as per normal. And then similarly, our eyedropper for Alt, although it doesn't have the same cursor icon. Control plus, control minus to zoom in, control zero to center the canvas and then spacebar or eight for the hand tool to move the canvas around. There's no quick command for the brush menu, so there's no F5. However, 
we still have a limited functionality brush menu. You will note that there are a smaller selection of presets and we can change some of the tip dynamics and scatter dynamics. So from what it looks like, uh, there is a pressure sensitivity for the size. So you can see already with Photo P that the brush functionality is much more limited in comparison to Photoshop. And we also don't have the option to link our opacity or our flow to pen pressure. We have to manually set those, which we can either have a drop down, change the number manually, or slide along by clicking on and dragging the opacity or flow. So that's it, I hope you enjoyed the video. The brush and the eraser tool and some of the key commands that go with it are gonna form a lot of the core fundamentals of how we manipulate a lot of other tools and advanced techniques in the future. So I felt it was important to cover this at the very, very start. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more weekly content and follow my Instagram at Sir John Ho for daily updates on my hobby progress. Until next time, happy hobbying.